Alright everyone, welcome back from the break. Hopefully you've been enjoying the run so far. We just finished up with a pretty fun co-op run of Obscure, and I think our next game is going to be pretty fun as well. In fact, I think I'm actually getting the signal that I think we're ready to go. Anyway, up next we're having Signalis. Our signal is... I tried me. I tried forcing that one. Either way, Signalis with Ms. Scarlet Tanager. Take it away. That was such a bad dad joke act. <laughs> I oh. had to come up with something. <laughs> so hello everyone, my name is Miss Garla Tanager. Um, you may have seen me do other spooky games or be well known for having bunnies and always bringing them into the camera. Um, we're going to be playing Signalis today on a um, category I don't think has been shown yet, which is glitchless, specifically the artifact ending of glitchless. Um, so we're actually going to be playing on the current patch which is going to be pretty interesting because there is some fairly significant changes that were recently made to the game in the current patch. But anyway, we're going to get right into it. And time's going to start in three, two, one, and... I forgot, and go! <laughs> I forgot the time doesn't actually start until you skip the first cutscene. So anyway, um... We are playing as Elster, who is a cute, adorable little robot who does cute, adorable little robot things. And we're currently looking for her girlfriend. That's pretty much the plot of the whole game. It's um, looking for your girlfriend crossed with Cthulhu. So you can just uh, imagine how that's going to go. So anyway, our girlfriend is supposed to be in here, but she's not. Very rude of her. So instead, we're just going to steal her key card as soon as it pops up here. There we go. And because this is glitchless, you're not going to be seeing some of the pretty infamous glitches like the buffering glitches or admin key skip or dull skip. So you're going to see parts of the Signalis speedrun that you don't usually see, which I think is pretty cool, especially because I'm one of the people who pioneered getting this made into a category to begin with. Because for those who uh, know the trials and tribulations that is down patching, sometimes it can be a, an actual pain to get a game to down patch properly. All right. So this is the first area of the game done. That's the uh, Penrose. Penrose. Penrose is the name of that ship. So story of this game. It's complicated. <laughs> it's really complicated. <laughs> But essentially, a bunch of ships going out into space, trying to find habitable worlds for colonization, and how it goes horribly wrong when they come into force, come into contact with forces of Cthulian nature. And I'm not even joking, this game straight up has copies of the book in yellow, which is very infamous in the Cthulhu mythos. Though, sadly, you can't skip every cutscene in this game, like this cutscene I can't skip, and I think there's one or two later that I can't skip. And then there's the pretty infamous minute and a half time when we get to chill that happens later on, but yeah. All right, so we're going into the first, um, we're going to the first person mode. Generally, these are just look around, find the thing that you need to click on and click on it. But, so here we go. Here is the King in Yellow. Have you ever read the King in Yellow, Ek? It's a very messed up book. Oh, sorry, cutscene did not want to skip there for some reason, that was weird. All right, I'm gonna take this key, thank you. Now, one thing that's different between the Any% percent category and the, um, glitchless category is because we're playing on current patch with glitchless there's a whole bunch of little changes if you've seen previous speed runs of this game you might see that um, speed runners will like wiggle in front of the door whenever they unlock it in order to sort of get the game to let you open the door faster you don't have to do that on current patch which is pretty nice because it's a little bit of a pain to do correctly on old patch you just have to stand, you just get to stand in front of the door like a normal person and unlock it like a normal person. All right, so this is the first part of Serpinski Dunn, which is sort of like a classroom slash 
Polynesian site. Again, this game is very complicated. <laughs> And now we're going into the land of enemies. So we're gonna get our first enemies coming up here in a moment, which they shouldn't be too much of a problem during the speed run because I am playing on the casual difficulty because it's faster. But yeah, go into the elevator, take this key down here. Thank you, leave the elevator. We're gonna be coming back to the elevator in a moment here. But essentially, the point of this section is to get our hands on the radio. Sort of a staple of the horror genre. I think there's a lot of games that have radios or radio-adjacent spooks. This game also has one, so we're going to have to try and see if we can find that. Alright. This puzzle is a pain, so one, two... Uh, one, two, three, one, two, one... Oh, I was off by one number. <laughs> All right. So the code is randomized, so it changes every time you play the game. And you just have to get a feel for where the pins are and guesstimate what the quote-unquote code is, so how many times you have to press up or down on each pin. And since it's randomized every time, you just have to, you just have to get good. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say about that particular puzzle. It's just a case of get good. But, all right, so we're gonna see our first little enemy here. Hello, friend. She's making us some dinner, but we don't want her dinner. Her dinner is probably a little questionable, you know? Probably she gets uh, food service people called on her because it doesn't look very sanitary. As somebody who's worked in a restaurant myself, it doesn't look very sanitary. Other friend, please don't hit me. Thank you. If this was promise ending, that you saw me run at a... I think that might have been at Flame Fatales. When I ran promise ending, you want to get hit a lot in that ending, but we don't want to get hit at all because this is artifact ending, which is technically the real ending or the true ending of the game. Take that. Thank you. Off of reflex, I just did the door wiggle that you would do in any percent there. You don't have to. It's actually slower to do the door wiggle on glitchless. So no more door wiggling needed. Just stand in front of the door open like a normal person. So one other big, big, fairly recent difference they made to the game is on the current patch, they made a few fairly large changes to the inventory system. In previous versions of the game, the eye or the photography item and the flashlight took up inventory slots, so we had to plan around that. On the patch that just got released, both of those items no longer take up an inventory slot, which is pretty nice. Not that we use the photography tool. Um, let's do this. But the fact that the flashlight doesn't take up an inventory slot is really nice. And there is a new option in the game for an extended inventory system that takes the, I think, six slots that you have in the regular game and just says, here, have eight, which also just chef, chef's kiss. It's it's great for the speedrun. It makes so many, so many um, parts of the game just more streamlined and less of a pain. the radio we finally got it so now we're going to go do a whole bunch of stuff with the radio oh i was talking too much and was not paying attention so the radio is probably the most important item in the speed run because you use it so often all right there we go and the down slight downsides of the codes that you get off of it are a bit randomized Zero, five, two, four. I'm missing a code. Five, zero, five, two, four. Okay. Five, zero, five, two, four. Enter. Done. Now, this is where you're going to get the first part of artifact ending. We're going to go straight down to 
96 frequency. Or 92 because I went too far. There are three specific frequencies you need to get, you need to use in artifact ending, and three keys you get with those frequencies. Now somewhere around here, oh, there it is. <laughs> now that particular key on old patch is actually a real pain to get. For some reason, the hitbox for it is like a single pixel or something. <laughs> Thankfully, it looks like they've made it easier to get that key, but the keys don't show up if you aren't actively playing on the radio a specific frequency. But now I'm gonna bring it up to about one or two, 30, 240. Oh. I'm trying to find out which specific frequency has the next code that we need. It's about there. Okay, so the code is missing part of it now. So this code I'm actually gonna write down. So I have a piece of paper next to me. Nine o o eight three. Nine o o eight three. Nine o o eight three. So we're gonna need that code for later. But for what you may ask, we're gonna open another safe with it. However, this particular safe is a little bit of a pain. Because the number pad is not numbers, it's letters. Which does make it a little bit of annoyance of an annoyance. Thankfully, I have a cheat sheet next to me that, gives, that helps me figure out what the uh, conversion of number to code is. So we're in an area now called Protectors. Protectors is just full of enemies, which is very rude. But thankfully for the, oh, wrong way. Thankfully for the most part, this is pretty close to what you would see in the normal any percent run, except for really one big difference. We're not going to be doing the VHS run. If you guys have seen this game, run before at previous events, you would do a glitch called the VHS blind run normally. We're not going to do that, so you're actually going to get to see that um, screen properly instead of having it be all glitched out. I did not actually mean to pick that up, but it's okay, I have extra inventory space. <laughs> normally you would pick that up later. Well, that was very rude of you. She decided not to be in the place I wanted her to be. So we're just picking up items here. The goal of this area is to get five keys for a door. This game, two or three times, I believe, does the whole collect five or six things to open a specific door. And that's pretty much the point of the chapter. In fact, it does it three times. Um, so we're just running around trying to collect these keys. There's five of them this time. The other times you have to do this pretty much the same thing. It's six. All right, so here is normally where we perform a buffer warp in order to glitch out the cassette a little bit. We're not gonna do that because it's glitchless. No glitch here, no glitches. No glitches, only fast. So that's our little friend Ariane there. She's looking sad, so we're gonna go give her a hug. Except for not, because she decided she wanted to vanish. How rude. Take that gold key, thank you. And onwards. So that code I mentioned earlier, that uh, 90083 was the code. I always write it down because you have a couple seconds to do it anyway. And I'm never gonna remember it otherwise. Here is the pad I was talking about. Those aren't numbers. Whatever will I do? There we go. Yeah, I have a the translation of what the number pad is next to me. Now, the reason why it's not just a regular number pad is they scramble the numbers around a little bit and you're supposed to do a, uh, get some extra items and a note to figure out how to interpret. No, that's, that's slow. We just use a cheat sheet because it's the same every time. change. Oh, 
can't throw that yet, right? Because I accidentally picked up the thing from earlier. So we're going to put away the key, put away that, pick up the shotgun, put the shotgun away. Oop, didn't want me to put that away. So the reason I'm picking up the shotgun, um, the shotgun is technically free on the current patch, which is pretty nice. So you can always take down as a backup if you need it. Um, but I'm just picking it up because of safety. For those who haven't seen this game before, there is a boss coming up called Mina. Mina can be one shot incredibly easily. The problem is you, it, it's not quite, I wouldn't call it frame perfect, but it's definitely a, you need a setup to pull off the one hit kill. And if you miss it the one time, it's pretty much just use the shotgun to take her out. Okay, I'm gonna pick up these flares. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just have that number memorized in order to try and get this gas to go away. So that fire stops which it has, lovely. So we can grab this key. And take that, thank you. Oh, hello there, friend. Please don't hurt me. All right, so I opened the store a moment ago. Um, I unlocked it as I was going through in order to free up my inventory a little bit. We gotta come in here and get this 10 millimeter socket, and then we gotta go find the wrench for it because we need to break a vent system, if that makes sense, to get the last key that we need. Oh good, she's in a good spot for once. She's not gonna be on a good spot when I come out of there, but. And here it is. I'm going to equip that and combine these two to make my life easier later. Not in the best spot there. Now I could take the ladder instead of jumping back down this hole, but it's actually faster to just jump down the hole again. Normally this is where you would get the water key if I hadn't picked, a, picked it up by accident earlier. Oops. Now there's some friends popping out of the floor. We're just gonna ignore them. There we go, game. And that should be the last key that we need for this chapter. Unless I <laughs> royally mess something up and we miss something, but I tend to play this game on a little bit of autopilot, which sure is a little fast and loose, but eh, sometimes it'd be like that. Oh good, she's in a good spot for once. All right, here's the door, and one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. I'll just face plant in the door until it lets us in. And for safety reasons, I'm gonna pick up the shotgun again. Didn't need the shotgun. First try, got the fast um, kill. So there's three versions, or no, two versions of that kill. There's the slow kill and the fast kill. The fast kill is a lot harder to get. You essentially use the flare item when Mina, that boss, is in the middle of a specific animation. If you get it right, you skip her, um, most of her death animation, which ends up saving about, 20 sec 10 to 20 seconds i think if you get the slow kill where she goes through the full death animation it is you it's still faster than trying to kill her with a shotgun but it's obviously not as fast as the fast version actually no i needed to put away one more of those here all right take this thank you so one other change from glitchless. Because of the fact that we get the flashlight a lot earlier, we're not actually going to be doing what you may have seen if you watched any percent runs of this game, where you would um, 
go into a couple of the dark rooms in the game and use a flare in order to get through a door, use the light from the flare. We're not going to do that. We're actually going to go get the flashlight properly <laughs> as soon as we turn the power back on, obviously. Just going to move through here. For some reason, there is a shower there. That's the showers. Doesn't look like showers to me, but... Hello there, friend. We're just gonna go. So the point of right now is we're trying to restore the power because the elevators aren't working, the power is out. We need the power back on. Thankfully, the fuse we need is right here. And if you time that, did it well. If you time that correctly, you can both grab the item and push the enemy away so you don't take damage. You pretty much always take damage coming out though because it's just too tight of a squeeze to try and get around that enemy. And then we're gonna go all the way back to the top where we started this chapter in order to turn the power back on. All right, the code is two, four, six, seven. Oh, <laughs> I clicked out of it on accident instead of actually turning it on, oops. <laughs> there we go, power's restored. Go back down twice to get back to where we were. Can't go down all the way to the bottom yet because that door is still locked. Now, if this was any percent, you would never lock that door at the very bottom of that set of ladders. You do in this game, or you do in the glitchless run, which is another difference between the two. Right, so we're gonna try and get around her. Thank you. And gonna go down once. And go get ourselves the flashlight, which is Probably the second most important item in the game after the radio. Well, that was not very nice. Getting smacked around by enemies. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Okay. Hello there, friend. Please don't hurt me. I've got things to do. Okay. Now, an upside to this game is that you do have an overtime region. So you can spend quite a bit of the game at low health and you'll be fine. Though there is going to be a couple times where I am going to be healing for safety. In case the items I didn't pick up earlier. Why, hello there, friend. Ha, you missed. All right, I'm gonna use that uh, shutter gate handle that I got earlier to get through here and grab another key. Essentially, this is very, this game is very Resident Evil-like where you're just going to get a whole bunch of weirdly shaped keys for a bunch of weirdly shaped doors. All right, look away now if you don't like flashing lights. These, I can't remember what the name of these enemies are off the top of my head. I used to know it, but they're very annoying. They're gonna show up a few times in the game. I'll try and bring it up when I remember to, when they show up. But they essentially make the entire screen go wibbly wobbly, and it's even worse the closer you are to them. So if you get up right in their faces, it's almost impossible to see anything as you will see in a moment here when I have to do that again in another room. So here is the other dark room here. This is another room I was talking about a minute ago, by the way. Because we need some tape. Because what I just picked up a moment ago in another room is a broken um, cassette tape. And apparently you can just fix a cassette with regular tape. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm gonna be a little bit careful here because I'm a little bit lower on health than I would have liked. Oh, okay, cool. I just got probably the best RNG enemy position. That's grand. And now you guys get to get serenaded by pretty classical music. I can't remember what the name of this song is. It's a pretty well-known classical piece. <laughs> but I'm straight up blanking on what it's called. But anyway, this is Falk, the final boss of the game. She's having a nap. And by final boss of the game, I mean the final boss of every diff or every ending, except for the one we're currently playing, Artifact. We, in fact, will be skipping the final boss. In this ending, specifically. All right, I'm going to bring this down to 65. Because we're going to need it to be at 65 for the next part of the Artifact part of this run. Okay, you may have noticed that I picked up healing items a moment ago. I'm gonna go ahead and use one of them now because we're gonna be going into an extremely dangerous room. <laughs> so I would look away if you have a hard time with. I got the key. Use it again. And we're out. <laughs> so that is a room that you would never see if this was um, the enemy percent because you don't need to go in that room at all. So, I mean, why would you see it? So that's the key that I got is the post, or is the post box key. Because what we're trying to get is the library key for one of the puzzles that we need in order to finally finish this area. And go almost all the way back up. There we go, library key. Whoops, wrong floor. <laughs> I've done that plenty of times while playing this game. I always forget to go down the eighth floor. Why, hello there. Okay, so now we're going to be going into another room you may not have seen before if you've watched the speedruns of this game, the library. And a puzzle you probably haven't seen, which is this big monstrosity here. And I have the code for it. Up, up, left, left, down, left, down, right, down, right, up. Because we need to get the king in yellow again, which for some reason has an astrolabe inside of it. That's all we needed in this room. We're just going to leave that person in there to chill. And now we're going to go in here to get the item that we are missing for artifacts. Hello, friend. That was not very nice. And the key is right here. Cool. So that is the second of three keys we need to make to get the prerequisites for the artifact ending. Now that that's done, I'm going to bring this code all the way up to 125 for something that we need at the very end of the game. There we go. So if you've seen any percent, you know admin key skip. You just run in here as soon as possible and just grab the admin key. You can't do that on um, current patch, sadly. Okay, I did it right. <laughs> For a second, I thought I did it wrong. So that is how that is actually supposed to go. You're supposed to get the astrolabe. You're supposed to use some planetary alignment chart stuff in order to figure out what the code is. You don't have to do any of that on any percent because the hitbox for that key card that I just picked up is slightly overlapped with the actual safe itself. So you can just pick it up through the safe. All right, and that is the um, admin area. I can't actually remember the name of that area. It's been a while since I've played that much attention to this game's storyline, except for the fact that pretty lights everywhere and lots of Cthulhu. Okay. 
not in the mine. We're just going to be going straight to the bottom of them. There's not, there's not much to talk about here specifically. It's just run straight to the bottom. Except for one little bit at the end when I am going to be picking up a healing item in order for a functionally free heal since you're kind of stuck in the room and it's timed, but you'll see that in a moment. We're just gonna take Elster and we're just gonna do some dancing. Because there's not really much else to do when you're going down to the mines. Sometimes I can get her to spin in an actual circle. There we go. <laughs> I gotta spin in an actual circle for a little bit, but you actually can see most of it because she was in the darkness. Alright, there's going to be some friends up here. We're going to see if I can get around them without getting hit. Ah, success. <laughs> it's usually a 50-50 shot if I get hit when I'm going through there or not. Alright, so this is the room that I was talking about earlier. We're just going to go up here, hit this light. The timer's going to start and we're going to hide up right about here. No particular reason, this is where I just like to hide. And by hide, I mean just sit here for a minute. Because we're trying to drag the enemies further down here in order to make it easier on us to come up here and grab the healing item. There we go. All right. We're gonna jump in this hole because apparently we're James Sunderland. And now we're gonna chill for about a minute and a half. There is nothing that we can do. We just have to sit here. You can explore, but there's not really that much to see. We just get to chill. Eat some Halloween candy if you've got it. Talk about spooky things. Look at pretty lights. Sadly, you can't even glitch out of bounds for some fun times on current patch. That is another thing that got taken out. So how's everyone doing? <laughs> I forgot to bring up the chat, so I can't even see everyone answering. <laughs> I can update you on a few things then. Uh, one, earlier the song playing was Swan Lake. Thank you. Yeah, I realized it about two minutes after the run started that I completely forgot to actually have the chat up. And I was just uh, go. I was just going. <laughs> another thing you asked that came up was apparently you can fix tapes with uh, make, uh cassettes with tape. Oh, well then. Yep. Um. Apparently, uh, someone mentioned depending on where you uh, patch it, it mm. might have some issues on the splice, but you can do it. Hmm. You know, now that I think about it, I can probably bring up the chat on my phone since I can't really out tab out of the game. <laughs> and then uh, on my side, I got my I got lights working again. You, oh, I was wondering why you didn't have your lights up on your stream. There we go. Now they I can broke. see the chat. It, I didn't know that they broke. I wasn't paying that much attention. Yeah. <laughs> now Not I can see ones. the chat. Cool. So yeah, that part of the game would be great if we could find some way to get around it. We can't, as far as I know. Is this the K one? No. Which one? Oh, it's this one. So normally we would just glitch straight through that door. Again, glitchless. We don't do glitches here because glitches are silly. All right, so we are in nowhere. That, that's actually what the place is called. Well, that's not very nice. All right, look away now. If you have trouble with flashing light, because we're in one of those rooms again. We're out of that room, but we're going to be going right back into it in a second. So way, way, way back in the very beginning of the game in Serpinski, 
we picked up a, I think it was the plate of balance. I can't remember exactly which plate it was, but we picked up a big plate. That is the key to that door, but there's five others. So we're gonna be spending this part of the game getting the rest of them. I'm gonna make that go away. Pick up this wedding ring. Apparently we're gonna be getting married. Just kidding, no we're not. All right, I'm gonna pick this up because now we're going to be doing the second boss fight of the game. I can't remember the enemy's name, so I just call her Leggy and we're just gonna run up to her and shove a flare inside of her <laughs> and shove a flare inside of the boss. Yeah, if you've played this game before and you spent all of your ammunition on the bosses that you, know, you ran around, you dodged them, not even realizing the entire time you could absolutely one-shot them. <laughs> that was me the first time I played this game. All right, we're gonna clear the inventory a little bit. Actually, I need that. Um, right, that's it. Putting away the key that we got earlier, just free to free up some inventory. All right, now's the time for the scary, a uh, really scary moment, at least for me. I'm gonna go through this door and the screen's gonna go black and you're not gonna see anything. This is, that was a little bit there was a glitch that was introduced with the most recent version of the game. For some reason, the game just decides you don't get to load into the room for a couple extra seconds. And every time it happens, I think my game crashed. Okay. For safety, I'm gonna heal there. Now for two important reasons, you need to keep your health fairly topped up for specific reasons in this game. Because as you saw there, instead of going around the room in just navigating the maze properly, I just decided to run through barbed wire because Elster is just built different. And no, that's not considered a glitch. It just can possibly cause a game over if you do it too much. Taking this, thank you. All right, so the big glitch that we're not going to be doing in this run, in this part, is doll skip. We are not doing doll skip. We are actually going to be getting the doll. Now, you've seen me pick up two of the pieces so far. There's three of them. We're gonna be picking up the third one in a moment here. But that is the big difference between any percent and um, glitchless is the fact that there is two glitches missing. Technically, you can do doll skip on the current patch, but admin skip alone, the one that I didn't do earlier, saves about, I think, a solid two minutes, two, two, and, two or two and a half minutes. And because of that, that's the reason why to this day, the game is still, or any percent is still done on the original launch patch of the game. Okay, I'm gonna be putting all of these rings on this hand and taking this plate key, thank you. And there's also, you know, other things that are more obviously missing, like no door warping, no, um, pretty much anything to do with the infamous warping glitches, the buffer glitches that you can do in this game. All of those are gonna be missing. Okay, that's good. Now, just because I'm doing this as a marathon run, I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to grab this repair patch. This is for the next room here. Normally I would not do this, um, but just because of this next room here. Let me in before I get hit, thank you. Okay. okay. I'm gonna hang to the right and hope that I only get hit a few times. Two, three, okay, turn around. This is fine. This might not be fine. Just kidding, I picked up those repair packs. <laughs> so I have lost so many runs to that room because I didn't judge how much health my character had which is a little annoying, especially when you're on a really good pace.
All right, now we're going to go where we would have, where we need to use the doll, which is where you would perform doll skip if this was any percent. I always remember the code to that door, but it kind of, sort of looks like a bird. <laughs> Can you hit, um, avoid the enemies? Oh, right. I almost forgot to actually put the doll together. I was like, wait a minute, please, I have to pick that up. Him. Thank you. There we go. So if I didn't put the doll down there, that um, contraption would have closed and I would have been able, wouldn't have been able to leave. That's why you have to get the doll when you're playing on Glitchless. All right, just for safety reasons, I'm gonna pick this up. Because you can see I'm quite low on health. Mostly because I got hit a couple more times more than I meant to. But... All right. Now it's time for probably the most infamous joke in speedrunning of this game. Once we go through the key door up here, which we're totally near the end of the game, guys. Totally. Absolutely. Right at the end of the game. Credits and all. I, I, I promise. Okay, let me in. We're just gonna plug our face into the wall there and credit, end of the game. I, I, I promise, I swear, totally the end of the game. Final cutscenes. See, credits. the main menu must be the end of the game right looks a little different but i'm sure it's fine oh wait nah it's not the end of the game it fakes you out halfway through so we're back on the penrose and this section of the game is to sort of show you what elster and her girlfriend Ariane's life was sort of like was like before their little ship crash landed and everything just went bad for them because their ship, if I remember correctly, their ship was supposed to be trying to find a col a good colony world for them to set up a colony on. But most of the people who got sent out for that little mission, they only had so much food and they would never be able to come back. So if they didn't end up finding a habitable world, well, they were just slowly gonna starve to death, which is part of the plot of this game because in fact, Ariane and Elster were one of those unfortunate ships that did not find a proper world. So that's part of the story of the game, among a lot of Cthulian nonsense. So we're just checking the ship out before the game will allow us to go say hi to our girlfriend. And now we're back to the present and Elster is lacking an arm. She has seen better days, but don't worry. She, she's gonna find a new arm by, by tearing it off of a former version of herself. See, she's fine. I'm sure she's fine. Because yes, Elster being a robot based off of a specific person, there's multiple of her. And we're back on the beach. Thankfully, we don't have to sit around and do nothing for a minute and a half here which is pretty nice. We just have to get to that boat in the distance. Downside is Elster or whoever the beach person is supposed to be, the first person, the first person view character is supposed to be, walks really slowly. <laughs> and there's nothing that annoys me more in speedruns than when characters walk really, really slowly. There we go. somebody forgot to clean up Serpinski, so now there is rotten flesh and flies everywhere. Kind of gross, so we're gonna try and get through here as quickly as possible. This is pretty much an exact rehash of the very beginning of the game. Complete with the fact that you need to go get the same code. Uh, excuse game, thank you. You need to use the same code on the same lockbox to get the same key to get to the end of the little mini area here. So 
So walking away from things. Are we playing Death Stranding? I wouldn't know because despite pre-ordering Death Stranding and owning the copy, it's over on my bookshelf, I have not played it. <laughs> I have a sealed copy of Death Stranding day one. <laughs> Mostly because I just, it, it, it hasn't been on my radar to play it yet. All right, we're just going to say hi to these guys and face tank them. Because it's actually faster than trying to go around them. Come on, skip the cutscene game. There we go. So this is Rot Front. Rot Front is the final level of the game. I can't remember storyline-wise where it's supposed to be set. I think it is supposed to be one of the colony worlds. But again, this game's story is very convoluted and confusing at times. All right, so you saw me I picked up the flashlight earlier because my entire inventory got wiped during the fake death out, or fake out death. All, that's all you need the flashlight for. The game will let you pick up that specific item if you don't have a flashlight. This guy's not gonna, yeah, he's not gonna be able to see. Nope, didn't behave. Sometimes I can get out of that room without getting hit, but usually you get hit in that room. All right, so just like earlier, the entire point of this level, collect collect six things to open a door. Except in this case, it's a little bit different. It's collect six things in order to spawn the actual key you need. <laughs> if we could find out some way to cause that key to spawn earlier, it would blow this game wide open as a speed run, but as of yet, we haven't figured out a way to make that specific item spawn, except for getting all six of the tarot card items. One of the moons of Neptune, I believe. Oh, okay. I remember it was some sort of colony, which if it's moon of Neptune, that would make it one of the colonies. Which, yeah, timey-wimey, Cthulhu and nonsense. You go from a ship to a colony on Neptune to five other areas in space and time. Just because we're trying to find our girlfriend. And we're just trying to set the frequency for the radio for a puzzle that we're going to be doing in a moment here. Oh, whoops. There we go. As long as you hear the music start playing, then you're good. Because we need that, well, not music, but like person yelling random codes in German into a radio signal. Then you'll be able to get the key item that you need to get later. Here's another tarot card. The Lover's Card. Now, if this was any percent, we would be using that in order to perform a buffer warp. We're not doing that. So we're just gonna have to run through here and hope we only get hit. Hope we only get hit once, but I got hit twice there because I am bad at video games. Yes, I saw somebody mention in the chat um, genetic memory or the memories of AI. Yes, that is somewhat part of the story of this game. Um, it's complicated, like, there's multiple versions of Elster, but each one of them remembers her girlfriend, Ariane. So they're all trying to find her, and they have gotten progressive lengths in that journey. Okay, there's the tower card. But we're going to be the one who actually finds her, right? Don't worry. So if this is any percent, you would usually do a box um, there. We do it on the way back because it's just a little bit faster for what you need to do. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick code here. Thankfully, it's easy. It's just Aeon. Take that tarot card.
just maneuver our way behind all these guys. Good to buy. Now it's this room up here, which is the room that we actually need this code on the radio for. We're just gonna let it play out until it opens on us. Thank you. And now we're gonna take the radio and we're gonna go straight all the way to 240. Oh, whoops, I went to 250. Oh, well, I'll fix it in a minute here. <laughs> Okay, now here's the box we're gonna do a This box is extremely important because we need to pick up these two keys. We're gonna put these tarot cards away. Now, if you don't, if you forget to pick up those keys and you go towards the end of the game without having grabbed those two keys, there is no way for you to go back and get them. So it is very important you don't forget to pick the keys back up from the uh, box. I have forgotten that before, gotten to the very last screen of the game. And nope. <laughs> Ended up losing a run to that. Alright. Combine these two and they made a photograph somehow. Magically. That is the second to last tarot card that we need. So you may have seen a couple times a girl in a sort of like blue and white dress that we've seen, but we've skipped the cutscene. She's the person who took out the second boss with a rifle and we you know, picked her up and put her down on the bed and was very nice to her. Her name's Issa. Issa is our friend. We like Issa. Nothing bad's gonna happen to her. Don't worry about it. Okay, so the reason why I put the radio code to 240 was because the last key is here. That is all three keys we need. Yay. There's Issa, and Issa is now a pile of chocolate pudding. Because this game also has a so it's not quite like a virus epidemic component, but it is a little bit. So all of the enemies that are around here are replicas, so the quote unquote robots, but they are infected. So if it's a person, just making sure I have all the keys, if it's a person, they turn into chocolate pudding. One, two, three. If it is a replica, they turn into a monster. All right, that should be good. There we go. All right, so we are almost actually at the end of the game, believe it or not. We are not gonna be fighting folk. We're not fighting the final boss, I'm sorry. Uh, game, there we go. Instead, we're gonna turn around, instead of looking at the king in yellow, and we're gonna use those three keys on this. All right, now the final boss of this game is this really, really long code. And time is going to come when I do the last input. 01064. All right, as soon as I pick up the flower in here, it's going to be time. And time. EG. So yeah, you, by getting all three of those keys, it lets you get this ending. Technically, in order to get the code and figure out what frequencies you would need to use um, and that really long code at the end, you would have to do a whole bunch of, you know, exploring and get a whole bunch of extra stuff, read a bunch of notes, figure out what the frequencies are, pay attention. Except this is a speed run, so we already have all that information and thankfully it's not randomized. But this is the artifact ending and it is the only ending in Signalis that you can not skip. You can skip every other ending in the game to get to the um, to get to the credit or not the credit screen the end game screen this one you cannot but yes that was Signalis this is con I think it's considered the true ending of the game I don't know if any of the endings are actually the true ending but this is considered the true ending by at least the fan base Elster and Arion in their Cthulian warped world, get to stay together for their last moments on the crashed Penrose ship. Both remembering each other because there's a bunch of amnesia and memory problems in this game. And I think it's very sweet. And finally, the game's gonna let me skip it. 
So total play time, 53-53. That, that actually makes me giggle a little bit. Um, so something that I didn't bring up is this is technically by default a world record because um, I am the only one who's run this category and my last run hasn't been verified yet. So technically this is the world record. <laughs> But congratulations yeah. by default. Um, I just wanted to show off Glitchless because Glitchless as a category is sort of my baby because I'm the one who helped route it, come up with it, figure out the rules for it and sort of browbeat some of the mods maybe a couple times in order to get it made a thing early on. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to come find more about me, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager. I play lots of spooky games and the odd RPG, and I have bunnies, obviously, Garrus and Tally, and my chinchillas, Edward and Alphonse, and they have their own dedicated webcam, so if you like fluffy animals and speedruns, come follow me. All right, like, congratulations once again. Thank you for doing the run of Signalis. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. Uh, really quick, we will be back with more spooky games for Halloween, so don't go anywhere. We shall be right back. <laughs>